in Willowbrook. My name is Bobby Ann and today we are in Judges chapter 4. I actually love the book of Judges because it provides some structure in the book with a pattern. Something that we see happen over and over and over in the book of Judges. It happens so many times that it's actually been given a label called the Judges cycle. Check this out in verse 1. It says, After Ehud died, the Israelites once again did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Let me explain the Judges cycle to you. In verse 1, it says, Once again, the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord. In the book of Judges, we see that happen over and over. The people of Israel, God's chosen people, would seek after things that were evil. They would worship other gods. They would go their own way. And as a result, God would hand them over to their evil and they would find themselves in the middle of a famine. They would find themselves oppressed by another nation. Essentially, they found themselves in a pickle. As a result, they would find themselves desperate and they turn back to God. They would beg God for deliverance. And God, in his mercy, would send someone called a judge to be part of that deliverance. After they had been delivered by God, once again, they would turn and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the cycle would happen over and over and over. In chapter 4, we find one of those judges by the name of Deborah. Now, there's 12 judges in the book, and all of these judges are, in a lot of ways, unlikely characters. They're people that you probably wouldn't expect to be the ones God would use for his deliverance. And Deborah is one of those. She's unlikely because she's a woman. She's a woman in a very male-dominated culture where women would not have been respected. Women certainly would not have been thought to, to have the wherewithal, the intelligence to lead a nation. But that's what she's doing. God has put her in a position where people would come to her and she would make decisions for the nation. In this particular story, which is actually quite a hashtag girl power story, we see that Deborah is a prophet. God is speaking to her and then she speaks to the people and she brings Barak to her and she gives him instructions from God of what he's to do. And unfortunately, he's a little bit of a scaredy cat. He says, hey, yeah, no, I'll go if you go. But if you don't go, I'm not going. And she tells him, okay, I'll, I'll go with you. But if I go with you, you need to know that the credit for the battle won will go to a woman. No, if you stopped right there, you might just assume that the credit and the woman would be Deborah. But you'd have to keep reading to discover that the story goes that God would use a woman by the name of Jael. And J.L. would do some pretty gruesome things involving a tent peg and a hammer through somebody's head to, to demonstrate the fact that gender, race, intelligence, any of those things that might disqualify us in the eyes of the world for God to use have nothing to do with what God is up to. I would encourage you today that you would seek after and think through, God, what is it that you are calling me to? Are, are you calling me to lead in a particular area? Are you calling me to speak up? Are you calling me to show grace and gentleness? It has nothing to do with a label put on you. It has to do with the calling of God on your life. And that's what we see with Deborah. That's what we see with Jael. And God wants to do that in you. I'd encourage you to give God your yes today because I love what Deborah says. She says, has God not already gone before you? If God's calling you to something, he has gone before you. He's paved a way for you. And he is looking to use those whose heart is committed to him and, and who says, God, you have 
my yes. I hope that you can hear from God today that, that you just take some time that's quiet. Spend some time in chapter four. See what God does with some unlikely characters and have a happy Wednesday.